when Gordon Ramsay was just a wee lad, he studied hotel management. I don't give a f if you go, you know that. I'll never miss dickheads. That expertise, alongside his chef skills, surely came into play during Hotel Hell. In the show, Gordon's role is to assess and help many failing businesses, trying to give them a new life. I want to start taking control, but I need room to grow. I need space for me to take charge. Much like his cooking shows, he's likely to get angry with incompetent people, and that's always entertaining to watch. That's why we gathered 10 times that Gordon Ramsay got angry on Hotel Hell. Somebody having a laugh. Juniper Hill Inn. Can I see something? To hold on to, because right now, I just want to get out of here. The Juniper Hill Inn had a beautiful structure, but the management was squandering it all away. Anyone with any restaurant experience would stagger the seating of guests, but as if they're just welcoming people to a dinner party at a oh. private house. The service was a mess, with no communication going around. Robert and co-owner Ari were more interested in giving people random tours than actually working. Because you know what it is. What is it? Come on. Everybody has to know what that is that you're fine when you're not really fine. Gordon was getting increasingly frustrated and eventually decided to step in. A foie gras salad. I mean, honestly, it's like a piece of beef jerky. That was the last straw, and it left Gordon wondering if people at the Juniper had any standards at all. First off, no more fucking tickets in the kitchen. Give him 10 minutes to catch up, okay? Also, he tried to convince Robert to work a little harder, or at least talk to his staff, in the traditional Ramsay style. Fucking find your balls! But he wasn't the only one in Gordon's sight. There's a difference between interrupting and no communication. And when you fucking put those entrees up there, you make sure they go. All in all, the whole ordeal looked like it left Ramsay exhausted. Jesus Christ! But before you go ahead to more horrible hotels, show us your love. Hit the subscribe button and see more great videos like this one. Now, back to it. Beachfront Inn and Inlet. And I'm gonna get in my f***ing car and I'm gonna get to f*** out of it if you don't get a grip. Things weren't going well at the relaunch of the Beachfront Inn. Brian, the owner, had trouble stepping up to the plate. Meanwhile, Chef Ben seemed to be botching every order that was coming out of the kitchen. Soggy as Wrong dressing. That's even worse considering that one of the customers was the mayor. The first two salads for the mayor had the wrong dressing on and were overdressed. I said, have you tasted them? He said, no. So he hasn't got your back. When Gordon pressed Brian for a response, he didn't give Ramsay much hope. In fact, Gordon was doubting the whole operation. Ramsay then seemed to take charge, while Brian wasn't doing much. Chef Ben said that the mayor's plate had gone to his table, but when Gordon went to check... And look at the mayor's table. There's nothing on there. While Ben half-acidly tried to get the mayor's food going, a Caesar salad caught Gordon's attention. What is that? Undercooked. That is undercooked. He couldn't believe the response. Ramsay called two waitresses to point out the obvious. It looks kind of dry. Very dry. Very dry. After shoving the plate back at Brian, Gordon wiped his hands clean. I'm going. I'm packing my bags, because that is the worst thing we've sent all week. Brian didn't know what to do. He was speechless and couldn't even throw the food out. Calumet Inn. Is your father going to buy you a hotel? Never, Never gonna happen. The Calumet Inn was an interesting place. It was owned by two sisters who got it as a present from their father. Yay me! Rena thought running the business was too much and ran away for three months. Vanda would usually wake up at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and complain about everything. When Gordon arrived at the Calumet, he noticed that the entrance was more like a prison. I feel like a goonie. Hey, you guys! At the front desk, he met Mandy. She was previously the general manager, and according to the owners, might still be. I'm sick of not really being the general manager. Um, I kind of feel like I'm being pulled in all different directions, and I don't really have a say in anything. The staff was absolutely overworked. After a horrible lunch, <laughs> Gordon gathered everyone for a quick talk. The chef was completely broken down. We're not getting paid. We're not paying ourselves. You can't as owners complain about not being paid. They didn't seem to get the message at first, though. They still tried to pin all the blame on the chef. Jen has called herself the best cook in town. She has Stop told us... Stop picking on her. her. They tried to make it all about themselves, and Gordon wasn't having any of it. Meanwhile, the waitress summed it up best. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Angler's Lodge. With a menu that easy, if your mind's not in that, uh, you yeah, know, you've got no chance. During the renovation of the Angler's Lodge, Gordon prepared a delicious menu that was well-suited to the Idaho region. With the restaurant packed with locals and also a food critic, expectations were high. Things had to go smoothly in order for the lodge to have a chance of making it. Unfortunately, Chef Gina didn't seem to get the memo. What are you doing? For the short rib, right? Right now, it's going three ribeye. Chef Gina wanted to do it all on her own, while her sous chef stood idly. Again, Art's there. He can serve the soup. Art, would you please? So next up, Art. 
Dress me a kale salad. No, 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 I've got the salad. You got the salad, okay. Yes. Gordon grew more and more frustrated with the situation. Never asked me this difficult, but you can't work on your own. I've worked on my own many times, chef. Well, that was a bad move. Gordon pulled her away, still trying to resolve the situation. You can't work on your own. I understand, chef. You're going to sink this place. After tasting a bit of the salad that was heading to the critic, Gordon finally had enough. He ordered the sous chef to take over and had Gina on dessert duty. Reheating a dessert, I expect you to nail. Too bad she didn't. Gina even struggled to scoop some ice cream and couldn't properly reheat the dessert. I want you to take your apron off and okay. go home. Vienna in. I'm leaving you with all the tools to get this place back right to where you wanted to go. When Gordon was at the Vienna, things seemed awful. You just served me one of the worst lunches I've ever eaten. And it was that bad, I started eating the edible flowers. Jonathan and Lisa, the couple running the hotel, were constantly fighting, sometimes out loud. Want to get divorced? You want to get divorced? No, I don't want to get divorced. Why has it always been your way? After inspecting the kitchen, Gordon was amazed at what he found. Everything was an absolute mess, and Jonathan didn't even try to hide or make any excuses. The kitchen, shocking. The line, disaster. Cross-contaminated, raw meat, cooked different, meat. Different. The staff was having an even worse time. They're drip-feeding your salaries. My bank does not take the checks. Neither does mine. That drove Gordon up the wall. Plus, the staff uniform? They had to buy it with their own money. That's absurd. Why? Why? The business should be providing the uniform. Well, maybe we need to do that. Yes, you I do. I never thought about it that way. Even after Gordon renovated the place and made a new menu especially for them, they seemed to still be struggling. Lisa complained about every single small thing. These are different chairs from the other ones, aren't they? Jonathan got lost in the kitchen. Gordon was livid. He tried and tried to get Jonathan to focus, but it took some work. You're the man holding the thing together. You got it. And if you go down, the whole place is going to go down. Curtis House Inn. Honestly? It must be the bloody ghost. Family can be tough sometimes, running a business too. So it's a wonder why some people think of combining the two together. The Curtis House is a, a huge thing to our family. We've been here for 59 years. We've all pretty much grown up here. The current owners, however, were struggling. It is shocking. No communication, not even looking at each other. Gordon was shocked from the moment he stepped his foot inside the Curtis House. There's usually a $10 an hour fee. That's what, four hours, so $40 already? Yes. They stored everyone's credit card info in a book. I got the credit card details for everybody. I will have to call 911. 911, what's your emergency? To top things off, she said Gordon's room was haunted. <laughs> when Ramsey went to eat his dinner, he wasn't happy either. Owner Chris also worked as a chef, but he didn't seem to care at all. You're wiping plates with this. When Ramsey confronted Chris about how he ran the kitchen, he didn't even respond. If you're not going to talk to me, then I'm wasting my time here. <sighs> What's the point? The next day, things didn't get much better. Gordon scolded the two siblings for not communicating. When did the drive go out of the kitchen? When did the essence, when did the word passion disappear? Like the dad he is. Go to your office and at least try to talk. Monticello Hotel. You're calling your staff liars? I would say so. If they say that I'm not out here helping them every time I walk in this building, I would call them. Monticello Hotel looked nice on the outside, but on the inside, it was in a state of disarray. Your staff, tell me that you have a drinking problem. No. When Gordon arrived, he was surprised by the location of his room. It wasn't in the main beautiful building. Rather, it was located in a motel right next to it. But things didn't get better when he arrived at the real room. You bring a mattress from your house into your hotel? I wouldn't. The restaurant was also a mess. My prep cook gets 20 hours a week. That's not enough time to make fresh food. Is that why all the food's frozen? Meanwhile, Philip happily flaunted his collection of expensive cars at the front of the hotel. During a lunch service, Philip suddenly started working. Is Philip, do you do this? No. no. Why all of a sudden is he involved? Because I'm here. I'm sorry. Meanwhile, the staff exposed the truth and even got into an argument with Philip. Please don't look at me like that, Philip, because you do do this to us. That's Philip was so far gone that Gordon confronted him, wanting answers. But unfortunately, he didn't seem to get any. Give me one answer. Give me something. Roosevelt Inn. It's like something out of the Adams family. The Roosevelt Inn was bizarre. It was an old school that was converted into an inn. The owner, John, seemed sort of crazy. What'd you want me to do? Get no, angry just... and punch no. you? You want to punch me? John also had a penchant for laughing at his own misery. <laughs> <laughs> 
I am amazed you find it so funny. John threw a monthly murder mystery dinner where he dressed up as Sherlock Holmes. Meanwhile, his wife Tina was stuck in the kitchen for the whole evening. But Gordon really got mad due to one reason. This whole thing was put together for your fantasy. Gordon laid out all the facts in front of John. Just one room book tonight would have made more profit than the whole murder mystery. And you prance around like some idiot. John, however, still was in denial and proceeded to run away again. Just talk to my hand, you know. I talk to my hand. Oh, what a have a good You're not night. 10 years old. Lunch was equally a disaster. That has to be the saddest looking plate of salmon anywhere in North America tonight. Gordon doubted that the owner could even boil an egg. Turns out he was right. I was wrong. <laughs> Is this really happening? Brick Hotel. And the biggest problem with the place is what? Verinda. Gordon was surprised with how run down the hotel looked when he arrived. Are they bullet holes in the wall? Uh, you know, they might very well be. I'm not sure what they are. It was also incredibly and almost unbelievably dusty. Housekeeper, stop. W which house? This house. The decoration was also throwing him for a loop. Is it a tea party for rats or Stuart Little? Can you pass the gravy? Gordon's usual test meal was horrible, too. Then I ordered something I've never heard of before, a cauliflower steak. When he went into the kitchen, he wanted to meet the chef. Uh, but where's the head chef? Well, we have both of them in charge. No such thing. He also took the opportunity to finally address the complaints of the ex-employees. She'll cut you a check in six weeks when she feels like it. She wouldn't let you go pick up your paycheck. She so, called the cops on you. Gordon found even more things to get mad about. Since I've been here, no one's cleaned it. Since you've been here, no one's cleaned it. I appreciate your honesty. You could see Gordon's rage mounting. You said you guys took out? No, no, I never said that. No, no. I never no? said stop, that. Stop, stop. You're it. just trying to make excuses. But the last straw was when Gordon spotted a huge amount of grease laying around, which was a huge fire hazard. Good lord, what is happening in there? Aurora Borealis. Lakeview Hotel. Do I have to take this to my room? It may be a good idea. The Lakeview Hotel was another case of a hotel with a beautiful view that was lacking in just about everything else. When Gordon arrived, things quickly went off the rails. That did say Valley Park, right? Yeah, it's not my eyesight. Maybe he thinks he has the wrong place. At the front desk, Gordon noticed all the dust gathering around. Something is growing up there. Yeah. Can you see that, or is it me? Can you I, see that I, from there? I can see it. Wow. Gordon seemed to be transfixed by the dust, though. Wow. Well, now you've made everything dusty down here. I've made it dusty. No, you haven't cleaned it. When Ramsey spotted the ice cream parlor, he was shocked that they didn't offer any samples. Man, you like kicking the crap out of the locals, don't you? The whole place looked so messy and dirty that Gordon assumed that it was closed. The fan sitting directly on top of the ice cream was also filthy. <laughs> And how long have you owned this place? 15. 15 years. 15 years. When he went to his room, Gordon continued to be shocked. This room probably isn't for you. What do you mean by that? It's for people that haven't been laid for a while, quite honestly. The hotel was so tightly managed, he couldn't even control the temperature of the air conditioner. Guess what happened when Ramsey took a look at the unit? Wow. They only cleaned it twice a year. Are you me? No. Did you enjoy Gordon getting angry with hotel managers for a change? What was your worst experience in a hotel? Share it in the comments. Get out, Philip. Leave me alone. Get the out of here. Don't miss out on your chance to win an iPhone 10. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Then click the description to increase your odds of winning. Good luck.